Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. Unreal concept, blueprint only, video settings menu. With Unreal Engine 4.11, Epic added in the game user settings nodes to blueprints, and that gave us access to the ability to change scalability settings and change some basic video settings inside of blueprints without having to access any C++ code or use any plugins. I have covered all of the individual nodes themselves and in the process created this game settings menu to control your video settings. And the concept here is this is a complete menu that you can basically just drag and drop into your project and you'd be able to have a video settings menu. Now it is meant to mimic the appearance of the Paragon settings menu, which isn't the most efficient and best way of doing it. However, it was an exercise and this is our result. The nice thing is the code behind it is fairly easy to change and the interface, you just hook it up and well, it works. What do I mean by it works? Well, let's go ahead and play this out. We'll go ahead and go into the standalone game and it's gonna load up. And I'm running standalone because this is the only way I'm gonna be able to show you the windowed options. But if we hit the, we can move our character around. I have it set up for P for pause for the input menu. We have our menu here and I can pause again or you can hit the close button to close it. We have all of the options we expect. So for example, I can run this at 1280 by 720 windowed and it's gonna go ahead and set it to that. I can adjust my quality presets, low, medium, high, epic, or custom, if I choose any of these options. We have access to all the scalability options down here. We could, for example, go to low, hit accept, close this out, and you can see it's now at low. We have no foliage. We could pull it back up. Well, let's go to Epic and hit Accept. Go ahead and change our resolution because that's what we told to change to. We'll close this and now you can see we are running at 1920 full screen in Epic settings. Now the reason we had that change was one issue we have when we're testing in the editor. It does, it works fine in the, okay, that full screen, okay. Okay, well, it's back. Let's not do that again. I was just noticing that basically when I went to full screen, it did not like that. So the issue I was trying to say is when we're testing in the editor, standalone game doesn't save out to file properly, and the plain editor previews don't properly do full screen. So let's go back to just the plain editor to finish this up. Let's make sure we're not going to run at full screen. And let's go ahead and save that out. Okay, so next time we open it back up, we should be fine. Like I was showing, we can change our overall presets. We can change our frame rate limit, 3D resolution, vertical sync on and off. It'll prompt us if we want to do some saving. We can close it. As you can see now, it's a little bit fuzzier with less shadows because we're in a lower setting. We can run auto detect. It'll automatically detect based on the performance and do some settings in here. So I've gone ahead and done auto detect and then applied it. Now we have back to epic settings. So you have a nice full built-in menu if you want to go ahead and just drop this in. About the one issue that is here is I cannot properly detect the display adapter inside of blueprints only at this point without using a plugin or C++ code. And to make things as compatible as possible, now when I said head, I left it here just because it's in the Paragon example, but it just shows some text. It's some awesome video card that I can't get info on in Blueprints. Feel free to delete it. This is a concept. You should skin this how you would like. Now one thing that is set up is this is a tab group of menus. So I can go to video, gameplay, where there's no gameplay options, or audio, which is our only audio option because this is all that we have now in the game user settings. Hopefully in the future, we can have an input one when they add in inputs and blueprints, but in gameplay you could put things such as maybe difficulty or anything else you want. But it's not set up to be expandable because this is all in UMG. We have right here, we have our top options box. Then we have our bottoms op options switcher, which is our main 
switcher, and inside that you can see we have our video options box, our gameplay box, and our audio options box. So it's really easy to add new tabs, you just add a new one for input. It's designed to be as expandable as possible. Let's go ahead and look at the code itself. All of these notes have been covered in detail in their own individual videos, but putting them together into a giant monstrosity of a blueprint is what this concept video is about. Down here in red is examples that were included when we were doing some of the other nodes. These things can be deleted. They're just here for reference because these are the source original files. So how this works is when we start off, we go ahead and run through a sequence. What the sequence is going to do is it's going to get our settings and load them up off of disk as the first thing. Validate, make sure they're good. So this is what we need to fix bad resolutions. And then we're going to go ahead and populate our arrays. What do I mean by populating our populating our arrays? Let's go with populating the arrays. Is to make things as easy as possible, I try to make helper functions. The helper functions will basically control what happens when you click on these. So when I click near, these ones uncheck. When I click on far, these ones uncheck. These are actually check boxes. It's to prevent, you know, you having four different things. This is all basically a group that is controlled by an array. If we go back into our example and we look at our populate, it's pretty simple. It simply makes an array out of the available options, our check boxes, and fills out the array. And you'll find it's going to be the same for all of them. It's just the amount of check boxes vary depending on the options. We can even go down to our quality and we have five options. Pretty simple. So if they were to add in something else, maybe they added in, I don't know, um, spe particle qual par particle quantities and it had four options. You could just populate a new array with your particle options and easily drop it in. After we have all of our arrays set up, we go ahead and we populate our combo boxes. Same thing we do with the arrays, it's just we're doing it with combo boxes. And it's pretty simple. We have our settings for our combo boxes, high, medium, and low, or our resolutions. And we go ahead and just simply make sure that they are valid and our arrays are set up properly. Then we run our main function that controls how everything looks and makes sure things are set up. It's our load and apply initial settings node. And it's giant. It's basically the same thing. It's just set up for each and every option. So we have options in here for our resolution and our video modes. Options in here for things like VSync and the frame limit. And then each of our individual quality settings, such as effects, textures, foliage. And it goes all the way down to our bottom, which is our overall quality, which I forgot to rename. So let's rename this. Load and set the create value for the overall quality option. Okay, so that one's now fixed. Now how these work is, again, it's going to be a sequence. Keeps things easier because you can easily just add a pin, move this one down to the bottom, and add in a new section. Each section is pretty similar. We're going to find the first section. We're going to get our game user settings node because we need to make sure it's fresh every time. We're going to select based on the current option. So in this case, which full screen mode are we using? Based on the full screen mode, we're going to go ahead and toggle our group. Toggle group is a function that was created to simply go in, set it to whatever option we want. In this case, if I select Epic, we're going to select Epic. Then we're going to go into everything else and we're going to say, well, since we chose this one, unselect these ones. And that's how we get our nice toggle group. Basically, we click on one, it selects that one, it unchecks everything else. And it does that by looping through the array that we're passing in. And that array is going to be based on our loading array that we set up in the beginning. So it's a nice helper function. After that, we go ahead and we just try to clean things up. We get our game user settings again, get our full screen mode, and set it. This is basically a safety feature to make sure that what we did earlier is actually working and proper. And in this case, because I have the full screen and the windowed full screen as different options, but they are technically part of full screen, what I'm doing here is when you run our options and we have windowed, 
our type is hidden. And when we check full screen, it has these two options. When we check windowed, it's hidden. So that's what that is doing for the second part here. And it just allows that little bit of visual flair. It is literally going to be the rest for everything else here. Like I said, I'll just pick one at random. We check our post-processing quality from the game user settings, compare that to which option that the customer has selected, customer, the player has selected, feed that array into our toggle group. So we basically say, okay, well, we chose low, check the low, uncheck the rest, and then we make sure that our game user settings match. And we do that again for all of them. So we're good there. One exception to this is going to be our quality. Quality is zero through three. Zero low, one medium, two high, three epic. However, if you've done something custom, it actually returns back a negative one. However, if you feed a negative one into the setting, it's gonna go and change to zero automatically. The setting node for the overall scalability basically has a clamp on it. If you set it below the minimum of zero, it becomes zero. If you set it above three, our maximum, it becomes three. So we do a little bit of finagling. If it's custom, I basically turn it into a four, which is my fourth option for custom. That way when we run this, I have the ability to choose custom as my fourth option and it will load up properly. So like right now I have custom and I save it. When I close this out and reload it, it allows me to have custom chosen as our fifth option by translating a negative one into a four. It's a valid way of finagling data. Once this is all done, I have the last one, which basically gets the current settings, which keep in mind we were making sure these were valid every time we loaded, and then applies them. And this is when it actually takes and applies them, changes all of your valid settings, and saves it out to disk. Now I have a branch in here called true or false. Basically, if I actually want to apply the settings and not just load them or change some of the options on the visual, the visual appearance, I'm gonna go ahead and tell it it should apply. If I have this unchecked, it's gonna go ahead and not do it. That is only actually used in one place, which I will show you when we get to it. But that is what our load and apply settings notice for. Our last one in our main sequence is basically listening for our pause menu option. This is all completely optional. You could have it simply, if I was to unhook this, and I was to play it, pull up my menu, well, the keyboard doesn't work. I'm not listening for input, I have to click the close button. This was just simply something I put in so the player traditionally would have the ability to close and open a window with the same button. You'd bind it to escape, for example, and escape opens and closes our menu. This is how you would do that by listening to our pause button action. In terms of everything we have left, this is our setup right here. Up here we handle our buttons. Basically, did we hit the accept button? Did we hit the close button or did we hit the auto detect button, which is our a hardware benchmark? These are all handled in their own videos, except it's simply going to apply. It's going to validate our settings and then apply them if we OK it. Cancel is simply going to close our window and give back control to the player. And the auto detect button is simply going to run our hardware benchmark and apply it, the results and load them. So that's what it's going to do. In terms of the other options, here we go. This is basically how we handle. It's pretty simple. We are going to do something. For example, in this one, I'm going to check the full screen checkbox. I'm going to, now let's go to one that's a little bit more sane. Let's go with our standard ones here. These are our view distance options. When we click on any of these view distances, near, medium, far, and high, that's when we trigger our event that we just saw. What's going to happen is it basically is assigning near, medium, far, and epic to a value, 0 through 3, because 0 through 3 represents it. We're going to check based on which checkbox is chosen, this quality value here, feed it into a select node, and it's going to go ahead and say, okay, this is what they chose. We use our handle toggle group option. Remember a nice little function. So it only chooses one of them. It only displays one valid option. We go ahead and get our settings and set it based on what the player just chose. 
and then we go ahead and toggle our custom quality button. What this one does is anytime someone chooses, we have low, medium, high, and epic. But if they go in and directly change something, let's say they want everything on epic but shadows and they want that on low, all that does is toggle cost custom up here because they're now in a custom setting. So that's all this node is going to do. It basically toggles just custom by itself. Going back to here, it's basically the same thing for every option. There are smaller different changes. Our overall one has the ability to basically load and apply based on the overall scalability level if they chose a custom one. The reason we have our checkbox here is if we should apply it or not. If a person comes in here and they, for example, chose low, let, let's go ahead and mess with a couple of these. When we choose low, we basically want to set all of these to low. Since we already have a function, load and apply initial settings that does this, it grabs those settings and sets them visually for us. We're just reusing the same one, except telling it no, don't actually apply it yet. Visually change it, tell the player what we've changed it to, but don't actually put those settings into effect until we tell them to, which is what our accept button is for. This handles all of our handling of the options. Our last section here is pretty simple. Well, last two. Technically, this is just our audio options. It's basically the same as the other ones, but since I have it on a different tab, I put it in its own section. This basically handles if the player chooses the different audio settings and changes them. Our last ones are what we actually do when someone clicks on the button. When someone clicks on the accept button, we actually prompt them if they've done any resolution changes, we ask them to change the resolution, and then we do yes or no. No simply closes it, yes simply applies it. And that's pretty simple. All we're doing is doing our normal apply node, and then changing the visibility of whether or not things should be visible or not. And uh, apply new settings panel. This is the panel that pops up. It's pretty simple. We simply have another panel, which is this right here that pops up, and it's yes or no for closing. That's it. Um, with the exception of the player character, which I'll go through briefly, this is just the code that handles pushing the P button and displaying or hiding our pause menu, and also handling the UMG widget, passing it back to the character for pausing it. The settings example itself is completely self-contained. You could take this widget, which is our settings complete example, rename it to whatever you want, and drop it into our whatever game, into your new project, whatever you want. As long as you can call this window and close this window properly somehow, using standard add to viewport and all of our other commands, you have a control panel for your video options that is just simply drag and drop using blueprints only. This is pretty much going to wrap up this video. It's a very large concept. However, all of the individual nodes are covered individually in their own videos, showing you what they do, what all the options are, and how we implemented them.